a Merry Cthulhuus to you all. Let me turn my old one's hat on. There we go. Um, I am announcing Cthulhu Christmas that I believe we're doing with another Biblio Fowl Reads and Big Hard Books and Classics. We are reading some HP Lovecraft for the holidays. Um, I didn't really like set out a specific reading log of what stories should be read. If anyone wants to join along, they are welcome to. I am doing four. Uh, I've read a lot of commentary, let's say, on H.P. Lovecraft and his biography and some different stuff about him. I have not actually read a lot of Lovecraft himself. I am more of... I'm more of a Poe fan, I suppose. I have read some Lovecraft. It tended to not be the really big stuff. I tend, I think I've read Dogon and some, some different things like that, but they were just kind of not his best. Um, and I always, there was, there's always the problematic nature of Lovecraft himself that kind of gets thrown around a lot as well. But I do like cosmic horror, so there's sort of the juxtaposition, because I am a big fan of cosmic horror, but Lovecraft himself I have some, some singular issues with. So for the holidays, I'm going to be reading um, some of his, five of his best known short stories. I'm just going to put it that way. Um, the ones that I am going to be reading, and like I said, you can either stick with what I am, the, the ones that I am doing, or do whatever you feel led to. I was going the more classic horror route. I did not really kind of shadow out of time as a little more sci-fi, and some of the other ones are a little more sci-fi. But I'm reading The Rats in the Walls, um, which I may well do a reading of on here, which is going to be... Uh, we're going to have to get creative with, because the name of the cat is is... It is horrifically racist, and I'm not saying that cat's name ever. So um, we're going to have to rename the cat if I read the story. Uh, the Call of Cthulhu I'm also reading because that's the classic of the old ones. And The Color Out of Space, which is one of his better ones. The uh, Dunwich Horror and Shadow over Innsmouth are the ones that I am reading. So you are welcome to follow along with the ones that I am going to do. Uh, you're welcome to read five of your own. You are welcome to tell H.P. Lovecraft where to go and how to get there. And you are perfectly valid that you do. But um, I'm actually kind of glad I read the Lovecraft biography for before I actually started reading his short stories because now I'm in reading them, I'm sort of looking at and being like, oh, okay, <laughs> this, this makes a lot more sense than it has a right to uh, now that I know a little more about you and your weird life. So join me and some of my YouTube, booktube friends and um, grab a copy of HP Lovecraft or just find it read on YouTube, because I think I've found all of these stories as an audiobook on YouTube somewhere where people just read the stories, because I think they're not copyrighted anymore. But, um, yes, grab, grab, a, grab an H.P. Lovecraft book, uh, find them online somewhere if you don't want to, to pay his, I don't think it's his estate anymore, um, don't want to pay for it, go to the library, because I'm sure they have them as well, and come discuss some of H.P. Lovecraft's best-known work, discuss how he is a problematic man, and discuss the fact that even though he's a problematic man, some of the stuff he, he's created, you cannot deny, has a very large impact on horror itself, on short stories, on modern horror in particular, because modern horror in particular has gone very much a cosmic horror route that some of the older horror movies did not go and that's kind of become much more the thing is cosmic horror and the horror of something far bigger than yourself and as you find out as I will try to explain as much as I know uh, a bit about H.P. Lovecraft the man 
um, as we're going through it, you will perhaps understand a bit why he came up with what he came up with and why so many people, even as problematic as a person as he was, are still keen to read his stuff and still unfortunately keen to defend him. I think you can, I think you can acknowledge his contribution and acknowledge his talent without, without excusing him. I, I think there is, I think there is a space for that. And, um, I will talk about that a little bit as well, because it's not that, it's not that 9 million other authors weren't problematic as well. It's just, he was so vocal about how problematic he was that it's, it's not something you can, um, skate around as easily as some authors, um, get, get their problematic issues kind of ignored, uh, here. He was, he was quite front and center with some of it. So... We'll talk about that, um, and as December begins, grab some Lovecraft and read uh, five of his stories. I'll put the list of the ones that I am reading. I'm also doing a book list of um, Poisoners at the same time. It's the my nonfiction Poisoners reading list that I will put up uh, here shortly. When the one book comes in the mail, because it's been taking a really long time getting here and put that one up. So we've got some um, de December horror happening and some discussion about one of the godfathers of modern horror and kind of his life, talent, and many, many issues.